Hi everyone, and thanks for attending this talk. I'm Benjamin Eriksson, and this is a joint work with Giancarlo Pellegrino and Andre Sabelfeld. So web applications are growing in complexity, and they have more interaction, bigger code base, and even third-party code that needs to be considered when looking for vulnerabilities. And this all makes it harder to find vulnerabilities. At the same time, a few years ago, Google awarded over a million dollars in bounties just for cross-site scripting bugs. At the same time, if we look at the number of CVs from cross-site scripting, we can see that between the years 2015 and 2019, compared to the previous five years, they have increased with almost 79%. This makes uh, cross-site scripting an important topic to study. So how can we actually find vulnerabilities in these applications? Well, we can use a black box approach. And the benefit here is that we don't need the source code of the applications that we are analyzing. Instead, we dynamically interact with the application to figure out where the vulnerabilities might reside. So here's an example. And the first thing we need to think about is how we navigate a web application. So we can follow a link between two pages. We might submit a form with a username and password then perhaps clicking on a button to generate a dynamic form where we later can add a user, for example. Now, we need to also think about how we traverse the application because where we inject the user might be different from where we then can see uh, where this user is reflected. So we might need to go back to the index page and continue uh, crawling the application until we find the user that we inserted and then we can infer this interstate dependency between the view user page and the admin page in this case. But of course, we want a scanner to be able to do this autonomously, to follow links, to submit forms, to click on JavaScript events or JavaScript buttons, add users, and then continue crawling until it finds uh, these inserted values. And when it does, also be able to infer the interstate dependencies between different parts of the application. So the main challenges we identify is navigation, traversing, and interstate dependencies. And navigation is about which interaction methods we need to consider. So for example, links, uh, form submissions, are those simple HTTP requests, or can we model them as forms? JavaScript events, how do we model these? And then how do we uh, interact with these uh, objects? Traversing is about how we handle the complex workflows in applications, which might include chaining different actions. So for example, we might first need to upload a picture before we can comment on the picture. And it's in this comment section where the vulnerability might be. And finally, where should we look for our payload once it has been injected? And as we saw in the example, injecting something in the admin page might actually end up being reflected on some other page. And previous works have focused on improving one of these methods in isolation. So for example, Pellegrino and Al improved the modeling of JavaScript events, while Dupi et al. in Enemy of the State focused on traversing applications with respect to the server side state. And Dushin et al with the Liger scanner was able to use reverse engineering to try to identify interstate dependencies. And our key idea is to combine the advantages of all of these methods into one approach. So to handle navigation, we treat the nodes in the graph as client side states. And the edges between these nodes are the action needed to move between these states. So for example, on the index page, we might have a simple link that we can just follow to the login page. But on the login page, we actually submit the whole form. So we don't treat it as a simple request, which we just replay. Instead, we re-render the form and we add the values and then we submit this form in able to log into the admin page. For JavaScript events, we model all of the JavaScript events and we execute them in a real browser. So we actually click on these buttons or type text to, uh, to trigger on change events. So for traversing, it's important to ensure that the scanner or the application is in a good state before we add any values. So if we're now on the right here, want to in inject a new user, 
we would first have to go back to what we consider a safe state. And this is get request in this case. And then the scanner would resubmit the login form, click to generate the element, and only then do we insert this new value. And this is to try to ensure that the server is in a good state before we try to inject any values. And so we re-execute the workflows if needed. For interstate dependencies, it's where the data is inserted can differ from where it's reflected. And to detect these sources and sinks, we insert random tokens. So here on the bottom right, we want to add a user. So the username we pick here could be some random string like FRCVW. And so this is injected into the application and might be reflected on another page in the application. So we continue to crawl. And for every page, we look for all of these tokens that we have inserted. And when we find one, we can infer this relationship between the admin page and the view user page in this case. And this is very important for when we start fussing. Because imagine that instead of adding a user, we simply update the username. In that case, if we don't make sure to check the sync for every payload we inject on the source, it might be the case that we only see the final payload once we uh, continue crawling. So what we do is for everything we inject in the source, we also check the sync. So we want to evaluate if Black Widow can handle the complexity of real applications. And here we look at both the code coverage, so the number of lines of code being executed on the server side, as well as the number of vulnerabilities we can detect. And we do this for 10 different web applications. And further, we divide these into reference applications. So these are applications running old versions with known vulnerabilities, and more importantly, that have been used in previous papers. So we can compare with those. But we also look at six uh, modern applications running the latest version. So here we have latest version of WordPress and, and PrestaShop and Drupal, Hotcrap, etc. But we're also interested in how Black Widow performs compared to other scanners. So for each of these applications, we compare Black Widow with seven other scanners. So we have Arachne, Enemy of the State, Jack, Skipfish. We also have WGET, but that is just for comparing coverage since that is not a vulnerability scanner. So the first result we'll look at is the coverage. So this is the number of lines of code being executed on the server side. And we compare Black Widow to all the other scanners, as you can see in the bottom. So with Enemy of the State, with WGET, with SAP. And we pair these up for every application. So in the first case, we have Black Widow versus Enemy of the State on the web application OS Commerce. And so we look at the lines of code being executed by both of these scanners. And then we see how many are uniquely found by one of the scanners. So here in blue, you can see Black Widow uniquely finds about 90% of the uh, lines of code. In common, they find about 10% uh, of the lines of code. And in the case of OS Commerce, um, Enemy of the State only finds a few lines of code that Black Widow does not find. And then we do this for all the applications and all the scanners. And what we uh, can see here, or the main takeaway should be that the blue area is much larger than the red area, showing that we find a lot more unique lines of code compared to the other scanners. And we also compare our coverage with the union of all the other scanners per application. And we see that our improvement ranges from a 63% improvement all the way to 280 for some applications. But we were also interested in vulnerabilities. And starting with the reference applications, we see that most scanners are quite good at finding reflected XSS. Almost all of them are able to do that. But where we really try to improve is on the stored XSS. And as we can see already in the reference application, we are able to find way more um, vulnerabilities compared to the other scanners. Um, and we can see that they struggle more with these stored XSS. And moving over to the modern applications, we see that we are actually the only scanner that is able to find uh, any vulnerabilities in these modern application. And this is both for reflected XSS and stored XSS. And if we look at the total column, we see that we are also finding more, of course. But more importantly is that the other scanners do not find any vulnerability that we do not find. So we don't have any false negatives in this, uh, in this empirical study, at least. But to better understand 
why we are finding vulnerabilities, we do a feature attribution. So we look at which feature, in this case, navigation, traversing, or interstate dependencies, um, really uh, was the main reason for finding the vulnerability. So we see six vulnerabilities here that only Black Widow finds, that none of the other scanners find, were due to being better at one of these features and just a single feature. So a concrete example here is vanilla, for example, where we just needed uh, interstate dependency analysis to be able to find the vulnerability. But we see that the real power comes from combining multiple features. So for example, if we improve both the navigation and traversing, or navigation and interstate dependency, then we're able to find eight vulnerabilities. And an example here is PrestaShop, where we required a combination of both navigation and traversing. And there's also one case where we needed to combine all three of them in order to find a vulnerability. So this was in WordPress, where we needed yeah, to combine all of them. And we have reported this, and it's already fixed in HotCrap, as well as PrestaShop. Another um, positive feature with Black Widow is that we have no false positives in this empirical study, and in general, a very low false positive rate. And this is because we use dynamic verification together with unique payload IDs. So other scanners were struggling with this in our empirical study. For example, enemy of the state at some point injects an eval statement that tries to print a string, and then it finds this string in the response. And so it deems this to be a vulnerability because it thinks that the eval print was executed. Um, so here we see the kind of the need for dynamically verifying that code is actually executed. Arachne used dynamic verification, but they reuse payloads. And at one point they were able to inject a payload into the page title. And this means that this payload would be triggered for every page load. So it thought that it found vulnerabilities in every input after being able to inject the title. So in our case, by combining both the dynamic verification and unique payloads, we are able to keep false positives to a minimum. So to conclude, our key idea is to combine navigation, traversing, and interstate dependencies in one, into one approach. And we see that this improves coverage by between 63 and 280% uh, compared to the union of all the other scanners across all the applications we tested. And we are also able to find more vulnerabilities in the reference applications, as well as finding modern or vulnerabilities in modern applications. And due to our combination of dynamic verification and unique payload IDs, we also keep false positives to a minimum. And Black Widow is also open source and available on GitHub. So make sure to check that out. So yeah, I thank you all for attending this talk and I'm looking forward to the questions in the QA. Thank you.